Good evening and welcome to Virtual Vespers at Community United Methodist Church in beautiful Fairfield, California. This is our fourth installment for our Lenten devotionals and hymn. And tonight's hymn and devotion is based on Charles Wesley's hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. What does it mean to live as a Christian? How can we continue to grow in our faith? Charles Wesley's Love Divine, All Loves Excelling is a prayer for God to guide us in our spiritual journeys throughout our lives. Lent is a time when many Christians focus intentionally on spiritual growth. In normal times, some attend Lenten soup suppers and Bible studies at their church. Others, in normal times, volunteer at the local food bank, join a spring break mission trip, or visit the lonely. Many others choose to donate to ministries near and far that work for justice and support these affected by unjust systems. John Wesley, a founder of the Methodist movement and Charles' big brother, called these activities means of grace. They are things we do to put ourselves in a posture to receive God's grace in our lives. Some of these means of grace are worship in our devotional lives. They also include times to serve our neighbors and stand up for justice. Those who participate in these practices experience a deepening of faith and understanding. John called this process sanctification or becoming perfected in love. He writes in a sermon, if thou will be perfect, add love. It is not only the first and great command, but it is all the commandments in one. He is echoing Jesus' answer when asked what the greatest commandment is. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and all your mind. And you must love your neighbor as you love yourself. For the Wesleys, growing as a Christian is all about being filled with love, which happens by the grace of God. Love divine, all loves excelling is a prayer for God to pull us deeper into love. The hymn begins by acknowledging that love originates in God and comes to us in the person of Jesus. Joy of heaven to earth come down. As we sing with Charles, we ask Jesus to make his home in our lives. Fix in us thy humble dwelling. Visit us with thy salvation. Enter every trembling heart. Because of God's great love for us, we are invited into new life in Christ and are given the ability to accept that invitation by faith and receive God's forgiveness for our sin. In these beautiful lines of the first verse, Charles expresses the beginning of our life of faith. With verse two, love divine, loves all excelling, begins to focus on our journey toward having the love of God shed abroad in our hearts so that it guides every action of our lives. As we have found peace in first receiving Christ, Wesley prays to receive second rest, a new level of peace. Our United Methodist hymnal says, take away our bent to sinning, but Charles' original lyric is a bit stronger. Take away our power of sinning, Alpha and Omega B, end of faith as its beginning, set our hearts at liberty. Wesley's prayer is to be so filled with the love of God that there is not room enough for any other motive. This removes our ability to sin, granting us a freedom fuller than that of our forgiveness which Charles writes in, and can it be that I should gain? Verse three continues the theme introduced in this very beginning of the hymn. We pray for Christ, the love divine, to make his home in us. Clearly though, this is not a one-time event. It is a way of life. When Wesley writes, suddenly return and never, never more thy temples leave. He's not advocating spending all of our time in church. He's instead praying for the transformation of every aspect of life into an act of worship. By participating in the means of grace, we grow in God's love until it permeates every aspect of our lives, every moment of our day. Thee we would be always blessing. Serve thee as thy hosts above. Pray and praise thee without ceasing, God, in thy perfect love. All of this is a process in which we grow daily. Charles reminds us in a verse 4 that, Sanctification is not something we achieve, but something God accomplishes in us by grace. Finish then thy new creation, pure and sinless let us be. Our role is to put ourselves in a position to receive the love God already has for us. 
We do this by practicing the means of grace throughout our lives, or as Charles Wesley writes, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. These weeks of preparation for Easter are a wonderful time to focus on this time in between. As we practice our Lenten disciplines, these means of grace, we seek to grow deeper and deeper into love.